Good. Good. Good morning. Uh, if you can please take your seats, we're ready to start. Paulus, welcome to this unique event, the Conference on Innovation and Entrepreneurship at AUA. Uh, a very nice set of words together. Um, let me start by saying that the entire conference will be in English today, so just in case some of you need some help, we have translating equipment, instant translation, okay, in the back. So please make sure you get them, because the, the entire program will be in English. Uh, I'm Irvant Zorian, I'm a, a trustee of AUA, and today I'm uh, co-chairing this event with my partner, Armin Megalitschan, who we'll see in a second. Um, this event is, is, is unique because it is coming on the 25th anniversary of AUA. We have spoken about innovation, we've spoken about entrepreneurship in different forums, but this one is slightly different today. You'll find out throughout today the difference of it. Innovation is not something new. We all know that Armenians have been in innovation for a long time, maybe due to the impact of the geography of where we are. We invented various things from, from early days, from making wine, up to MRIs, up to um, technology in the computer domain. However, today we are in different sphere. We are innovating in Armenia and abroad. Today we'll be concentrating on the innovation in Armenia. In terms of entrepreneurship, also as you know Armenians have been entrepreneurs, have been in the business area in various domains uh, throughout the history, from China to Iceland, elsewhere, our merchants have populated the world. Now combining these two together is very interesting because today we have the opportunities to be innovators and entrepreneurs at the same time. And that's the concentration of what we'll be doing today together. And AUA is not new for that. AUA throughout the past 25 years was not simply an educational institution. AUA was created to be a differentiator, to bring new values. And Professor De Guerian will tell us more about that as we will hear. But in this differentiation, AUA contributed to innovation and entrepreneurship, and the first session is dedicated to that. We'll hear about that. We'll cover the status of where we are today in Armenia. And our last session will be talking about the future of innovation and entrepreneurship as we go forward. Now, numbers are not what we're looking for. Number of startups, number of new ventures, number of new businesses is not what we're looking for. We're looking for successful cases. We're looking for quality. So today we'll be covering with you samples Samples of success stories, samples of new innovative companies or more established ones, but we'll see them as case studies, as success stories, we'll analyze them together. Of course, it's not comprehensive. One day conference does not give us the chance to cover everything. So we're looking at those samples, but we have the opportunity to discuss it together. So each session will have presentation part and panel, okay? And you are invited to participate in the panel portion if you want because this is meant to be interactive, and it's meant to come up with results, to come up with conclusions at the end. So the idea is to see success stories, innovation, entrepreneurship, talk about the future, come up with suggestions, and go from here with ideas to continue. Among which, AUA will have a new role with EPIC being created, a new center, and our man who is the head of that, uh, that center will be telling us more about it throughout the program. I will not be covering the program with you, my partner, Amir Megadichan, will do that. We'll review the program. Meanwhile, I'd like to thank him, thank all of you who are here, and to thank everybody who contributed to this conference. I'll see you later. Thanks. Good morning. How are you? I am great. So let's get started. The conference is actually very, very packed. Uh, and this, today we'll basically be having 35 to 40 speakers, panelists, and moderators. So one thing I would like to ask all of us to actually try to be on time. Uh, as Armenians, I think all of us have tendency to, uh, to take at least twice as much as we are allocated time. Uh, but let's go over the, over the, over the agenda. Um, so after, after the remarks, opening remarks, we'll have an 
uh, opening panel, and Carol Astanian will be moderating the panel. Uh, in fact, we actually have about four panels throughout the program today. Uh, at about 11, 11.15, we'll, go, we'll get out of the building, of the new it's Paramazav Adisian building. We'll go outside to the main building, where will be the opening ceremony of EPIC, and actually you'll see the new area of, uh, the, of, of AUA in general, which has been renovated very, very nicely. Uh, after that, all of us are invited to go have lunch at AUA cafeteria, after which we'll come back here, where Aram Salatian will deliver his keynote speech and will continue with the rest of the panels and company presentations. Uh, as Yervan mentioned, we'll have uh, several panels, and uh, this summarizes the panels with, uh, with all the panelists and moderators. Uh, the, the most interesting thing when we're trying to decide who should be participating in this panel is there are so many amazing people in Armenia that we're actually having a hard time uh, choosing people. So this is just a sample of people that we chose to participate in this panel. In no way this is comprehensive and represents what Armenia has to offer, what what Armenians have to offer. Uh, along with these panels, we'll also have company presentations, startup presentations. There will also be people who will be presenting their new innovative entrepreneurial ideas. Uh, and representatives of, of the following uh, organizations and companies will be presenting. Some of them have also set up booths outside uh, to showcase what they are producing. So I welcome all of you to actually stop by their tables as well. Uh, with this, I would like to actually invite uh, Armander Kyrgyzian uh, to speak about AUA and the 25th anniversary, after which we'll be uh, listening to the, the wonderful panel being moderated by Carol Asanian. Armander Kyrgyzian, please. Good morning, and uh, welcome to the American University of Armenia. Uh, as we already heard, uh, this year, this summer, about now, we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the university. About 25 years ago, uh, several of us came here with Mirna Babian, Stepan Karamardian, Louis Simon, and myself to start the university. Uh, we had no facilities, no students, no faculty, no staff, no offices. And how do you start a university? That's an innovative approach itself. Uh, well, we pretended that we had faculty, students, and uh, offices, and facilities, and pro prepared a brochure that talked about different programs, courses, uh, and, well, it happened. <laughs> I will not go through the detail. Uh, we started our celebrations last Tuesday uh, with uh, an exhibition of 25 artists marking the 25th anniversary. Uh, and the exhibit is still open, will be open until, I think, June 16. Uh, uh, and so, if you haven't seen it, uh, I urge you to go to the fourth floor on the west side of this building, to the Akian Gallery, uh, to see the exhibit. It's a marvelous collection of uh, superb artwork by 25 artists in Armenia. Um, this conference on innovation and entrepreneurship is a part of our celebration events, the second event in the series. Uh, we will have a concert today, we have our graduation tomorrow, and we have a gala dinner tomorrow night marking, celebrating that. Um, from the very beginning, AUA has emphasized innovation and entrepreneurship in our teaching, in our research, and also in our function, the various processes that we do in our organizational structure. Uh, innovation permeates uh, the way teaching is done in our classroom, the way interaction between students and faculty happens, the way course, courses are formulated, syllabi are formed, student learning outcomes are identified. Uh, it permeates the way students and faculty conduct research in our several research centers, the Akopian Center, the Center for Health Services, the Engineering Research Center, the Trapanjian Center for uh, 
policy analysis and the other centers we have and hopefully in our new center, EPIC. Um, but innovation also permeates the processes we have for various functions of the university, the way we admit students, the way we, as we decide on financial aid. It's innovative in the sense that uh, the, the process that we formulate assures objectivity, transparency, and fairness. It also permeates in the way we assure quality in our teaching, in our research, and other operations. So uh, innovation goes beyond the technical aspects that will be more the subject of this uh, conference. Uh, I just want to emphasize that it permeates all aspects of the university. Later this morning, we'll be opening several new facilities, as Armin already mentioned, including our Entrepreneurship and Product Innovation Center, EPIC in short. We know that a fertile ground for innovation is the boundary between disciplines. Furthermore, innovative ideas blossom when teams of people from different disciplines collaborate. Innovation does not happen anymore in the center of things. Things have, many problems have already been solved. Uh, so it's, it's really at the edges of disciplines. EPIC will bring together students, faculty, researchers, as well as professionals from different disciplines in a collaborative center where they will work together to create that which is new and which is useful. It will facilitate multidisciplinary research and production, hopefully leading to the creation of new ideas, products, and jobs in Armenia. There are many people in the university that worked hard to create the idea, the cons the, to conceive the idea of EPIC, uh, but I want to single out Aram Hajian, uh, the dean of our uh, College of Science and Engineering, who had the dominant role in conceiving the idea of EPIC. And of course, I want to uh, recognize, what did Armin, I hear, Armin, who is the director of EPIC, uh, a young man uh, by age, but uh, very much experienced and very much uh, uh, mature in his approach. And I'm very glad that he is the director of EPIC. Uh, I want to thank uh, Yervan Zorian, who is a member of our Board of Trustees, and Armin McGurchian for organizing this conference. And I uh, am looking forward to a very exciting uh, time here with very interesting conversations. And uh, at the end, I would like to introduce another board member, Carol Aslanian, who will be moderating the first panel. Carol, thank you. Actually, I need my panel up here with me. So would you all join me? We have five renowned panelists this morning who will open the session on innovation and entrepreneurship. Come to the stage. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Carol Aslanian, as was introduced recently. And I am a board member, a board of trustees member of the American University of Armenia and have been for more than a decade. And I've seen the progress and the development of this institution over many years and so proud to moderate this renowned panel of presenters who will open this session on entrepreneurship and innovation. We will spend, each panelist will have about three to five minutes and my major opportunity this morning is to keep them on time. I did not make remarks, they're gonna make the remarks. But my job is when you see me stand, panelists, it means you've got about 30 seconds to a minute, all right? Um, we, have a, we, have time. <laughs> we have time for questions at the end, so 
mark your comments down and we'll have time to address them and address them to one or more of the panelists. And um, let's see, uh, I think that's about it, okay? We, these, the, the point of this panel is to tell you how AUA is at the center, we think, of innovation in entrepreneurship. And it has been for a number of years. I think our panelists will not only describe what we've done, but what we see in the near future. Our first speaker will be Adam, Adam Hajan, who is Dean of the College of Science and Engineering and who's led the way in many of these innovative practices that we see today, but he has many, many great ideas for the future. So Arm, come to the podium and tell us what you think. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Carol, and uh, everyone here. Uh, we already heard a uh, very big picture, uh, kind of the own mission and uh, where it fits in in future. Actually, I'm going to give a very short presentation uh, where I'm just going to, I guess, in like a cartoony fashion, d pay, uh, d demonstrate uh, the visualization of kind of what is AUA uh, today and where does Epic fit in. So. Uh, here's our growing family. In fact, this is a snapshot. This whole conference and this summer is very much on a trajectory of growth in general at AUA. We have new programs. We have actually new programs in the pipeline or under discussion. So this is very much of a snapshot where we are today. Uh, the big circle is a college, the College of Science and Engineering, one of our three colleges. Above the line are two master's degree programs. Uh, the first is Industrial Engineering and Systems Management. Uh, the other above the line is computer science, computer and information science. Below the line is one of our new bachelor degree programs. That's our college. Our, meaning mine, the royal we, kind of us, uh, the College of Science and Engineering, but we have a lot more. Uh, and so we have a College of Business and Economics as well uh, here at AUA. Again, above the line are two master's degree programs. One is a Master of Science in Economics, uh, and we have an MBA and a Bachelor in Business. Uh, a third big college uh, here is the Teaching English as Foreign Language, Political Science, and International Affairs, and an LLM, a law program. These are, again, all master's degree programs. Below the line is our English and Communications uh, undergraduate, the third of our three uh, current undergraduate programs, all of which were rolled out three years ago. And so actually in September, we'll be taking our fourth intake to more or less get to a steady state of a four-year undergraduate community here at AUA. Very exciting times. We have a School of Public Health. Uh, it's one master's degree program in, in public health. And we have a, a Gopian Center for the Environment. Uh, so there's no degree program here, at least not yet. Uh, but the, the ACE, uh, as it's affectionately referred to here at AUA, teaches a lot of courses for all of our students, has a very active research program. And in a nutshell, the, the, the little cartoon we see uh, up here are the current uh, sort of master's degree programs, the current academic environment of AUA as we, as we have it today. Uh, the new kid on the block is EPIC, we've heard about today. And where does EPIC fit in? We get, I get this question a lot. Is this part of this college, part of this program? Is it separate? And so uh, here's my rendition, uh, my first attempt at animation in PowerPoint, actually. Uh, but my rendition of, of how uh, EPIC and where EPIC fits in and so uh, I think our, our president, Armand de Guerin, said uh, that innovation often takes place at the periphery. It often takes place where two scientists, two engineers, two uh, innovators may norm normally not interact, but come together because of interesting threads that now connect fields that maybe uh, conventionally or traditionally we didn't expect. But in fact, more and more this is happening. Uh, and a university is, is exactly that fertile ground where such interactions are more likely to take place. This is, I think, what makes all of us who work at AUA or who have some association with AUA uh, very excited to be part of the ecosystem. Uh, so now let's, let's let some of these boundaries fade away. We're left with uh, all the entities and the growing family, exactly, the hub. So the idea is that EPIC will be the 
uh, physical space as well as the um, you know uh, ephemeral or space out, out in the uh, in the atmosphere, but the actual real space where these people will interact, where innovation will be the calling card or the core uh, um, you know value and the theme that will unite uh, students, faculty, researchers, alumni. Uh, we're going to hear a lot more about, I think, EPIC and about a lot of the exponents and activity around EPIC. The idea is this is the hub, and EPIC will be the hub that makes our value creation wheel turn here at AUA. So thank you. Thank you, Aram. Um, you, what it reminded me of was the circle of various parts. And if you think of a university and all the departments and areas of specialty we have, it reminds me of something I'd like to share with you, which is an organization in the United States called IDEO. And it's a think tank organization that comes up with innovative solutions to all kinds of problems. And one of their main techniques, which re resembles this chart, is that to, to solve a problem in business or education or whatever, they bring various disciplines to the room. They have a sociologist, a psychologist, a business person, an engineer, a health-related uh, expert, and they think of the solutions together. So when you think of a university, you have all these components. And to come up with innovation is just not one discipline. It's a combination of disciplines so that you come up with a common solution that takes the best of each area of study. And I think that's important to have based in a university. Our next speaker is Samuel Shukurian, who is the scientific leader, IT Educational Research Center at YSU, but he's also senior R&D manager in embedded test and repair uh, area of study at uh, Synopsys, which we all know very well, Synopsys Inc. Come on to the podium, Samuel, and tell us what you think. Hello, uh, I'm Samvad uh, Shukurian. A big uh, amount of my life I uh, spent during, I spent uh, within the Soviet era. So in some sense it could be interesting why I'm here, how, what, what is my relation to AA. I would like to um, uh, start uh, re related to uh, this one. Uh, it is System Test and Reliability Laboratory which was established in 1995 by Yervan Zorian, and, and it was hosted by AUA, and we are, were, uh, it was totally unexpected to us because we were working in, in a completely different environment. This was like first time we started to work in Western-oriented environment, in, in, uh, in, in, uh, and this helped us a lot because there were uh, uh, really very essential differences in preparing papers, in doing research, etc. So we tried to, to learn everything, and uh, the first participants, uh, so participants were including National Academy of Sciences, I mean laboratory, Yerevan Scientific and Research Institute of Mathematical Machines. I worked over 25 years there. It was a huge institution. And uh, for example, the Soviet Global Network, similar to ARPA, was developed, like 30-40% of this network was developed in this institution, and I was one of the chief designers uh, leading multi-million projects. And uh, American University of Armenia also was participating. Avetik is here, his hand, oh, uh, we will speak about this, and Yerevan State University. I was, at that time, I, after the crash of the Soviet Union, I moved to university and started to work as a professor there. And core team, I would like also to mention these guys, because this were very interesting. Uh, uh, one of them was uh, Arman Kuchukyan. He was chief designer for years in Yerevan uh, Institute of Mathematical Machines. And he was leading the development of almost all uh, most efficient uh, Soviet mainframes. Uh, so his wife, Kima Kuchukyan, who was specialist in electronic testing, and um, Valery Vartanian from National Academy of Sciences, uh, Avetik Yesayan, 
from American University and and me uh, from Yerevan State University. So this was uh, this was the core team, which uh, further grew to like to, uh, over 20 people, and we were um, and uh, and who were the sponsors? How it was it became possible? So uh, our first sponsor was AGBU, and first two years, I believe, we were uh, supported financially supported by this AGBU. It took a lot of time to to uh, be become ready for developing internationally recognized projects in the area of electronic testing. You know, this is very important and and uh, very much uh, very much applied area. And to 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 to, uh, uh, to understand clearly the problems, to uh, to find out solutions which could be acceptable for the industry, it took some time, and we gradually worked there and did several projects, and finally we were able also to, uh, and of course AUA was because they provided us completely, uh, like free of charge, uh, the uh, room, the equipment, etc., all, all the necessary stuff which was necessary for developing. And, and finally, we were able to to won the project uh, and to do some some research for AT&T Bell Labs. Here, of course, um, the role of Yervant was very important. He clearly understood that problems which exist there existed there, and uh, we were availing of that. Uh, this is probably what I wanted to say. And main direction was testing of electronic de devices and systems. And uh, approximately a year after, we were able to publish already papers, and uh, we, we started to work on, on, on different kind of innovations. And by the way, uh, the patenting part is c completely also different. The West and, uh, Western approach uh, totally differs, and, and the application should be prepared in a different way. In under, uh, you, you should understand the co commercial value, uh, the uh, uh, dangers that can occur if somebody will uh, like uh, avail of your intellectual property, etc. So all this stuff should be reflected in the patent. We were able to to find out uh, uh, this was completely new to to us, but finally we were able to also to preserve. I'll speak about this and and see the growth was very important. Laboratory has uh, has growth itself, but also it had uh, it um, had a great influence also on surrounding. At that time, different companies started to, and and uh, all the members of our laboratory were able to become key players in these laboratories because I believe uh, clearly that uh, research-driven uh, development is a very very strong thing, and we were. The, the directed to, to that, to, 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 and we're doing everything to, to be successful in that. And, and finally, uh, uh, all, all this stuff is, is really well recognized now as specialists, as, uh, as experts in the area. So this is probably the point I wanted to say. And uh, just to cover briefly, um, uh, I wanted to say that uh, at that time there was no such a term like ex excellence center, but we can say that Star Laboratory was the first excellence center in Armenia, was a real uh, point which was connecting universities to, 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 to the industry. We were able to do successful projects for 18 people labs. And uh, we were concentrating expertise on, on what we knew before well, but we were also, uh, like, it was mixed with, uh, with this modern knowledge of the subject, modern knowledge of the area, etc. And all this brings to, su uh, to successful results. Uh, this is probably um, all. And we were actively communicating. I would like just to bring some photo, which also shows, like, uh, further our communications established was uh, we were able to, to have uh, different kind of uh, stuff here, and by the way, uh, I believe that StarLab was initiate, initiated me to create a special center in the university, IT uh, educational and research center, and this is uh, like a separate body in the structure of university, and it completely differs, I believe, because we are 
already we have already uh, a lot of uh, now international program internationally recognized programs we are working with different universities with american universities with german universities with <coughs> uh, with israeli universities started uh, this year to work uh, and all this brings to 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 cover uh, the listed problems and to participate this is probably all i wanted to say thank you very much Thank you, Samuel. I think one of the major points I want to make on your presentation is he spoke about 1995. Innovation, entrepreneurship is not new to Armenia, and we've got a wonderful history to follow from. Uh, yesterday, we had a wonderful presentation at our trustees meeting by Tom Samuelian, who is going to present the role of the humanities, I hope, and the social sciences in the role of innovation and entrepreneurship. As I said earlier, it takes many, many different disciplines coming together and thinking together to be innovative. So Samuel, tell us what you think about the future in your regard. Here, Tom. It's okay. It's okay. I, I recognize who I was supposed to speak next. Okay. So, um, I, uh, okay. so um, I'm going to make six points, and I'll make them brief because I know we have very little time. Um, AUA contributes to innovation in a number of different ways, and innovation, despite the idea that it's about ideas, it's actually equally about society and the, and the social context of, uh, of uh, innovation and uh, the community. So number one, AUA leads by example. Um, it's uh, created an internationally accepted uh, standard of education. And we, in the humanities in particular, focus on developing people's intellectual curiosity, their um, integrity, service to the community, as being essential characteristics of being a student and being a AUA graduate. Um, in particular, uh, we emphasize that it doesn't that so much matter what you teach. It's more important if you, if I should say it this way. The saying goes as follows, that uh, it doesn't matter what you teach if you don't practice what you preach. I got it that time. And unfortunately, um, often we put too much emphasis on ideas and not enough on setting an example. Uh, and that's part of what we do in the humanities and social sciences, focus on the shaping of the community uh, and the values that people need in order to be an effective community. One of those values is connecting with the world. Uh, English is a language that connects us all. It's a language of science, of uh, politics, of economic discourse. Um, and the goal is not to replace uh, the existing uh, skill set that our students have, but to expand and contextualize it so that they can be parts of global cultures and address global problems, uh, giving them a broader repertoire of ideas, uh, of more varied palette, if you will, cultural, diverse, cultural versatility as opposed to simply diversity, and the ability to claim uh, Armenia's rightful place in the world of science and, econo and economy. Third point that I wanted to make is that uh, we are experts in tailoring uh, global ideas to local needs and conditions. One of the things that one has to be able to do is to translate between cultures. Uh, and this is a major value added because uh, it's very hard to do this if you're not in the environment itself. You have to be contextualized in the living environment in order to be able to properly translate global ideas into local terms or local ideas into global terms. And this institution is ideally positioned to do that. And it would be hard to create another uh, incubator, so to speak, of that particular skill other than this institution. Fourth, uh, lifelong learning. Um, one of the things we emphasize in general education in particular are the skills of lifelong learning. Um, we are quickly all becoming non-traditional students. We used to talk about the non-traditional student as being the student that uh, learns uh, and it comes back to school in, in mid-career or changes careers. In fact, we are all non-traditional students forever now because we're all going to be changing careers several times in our lives. Um, and AUA in particular, uh, the humanities and social sciences, uh, help people to become independent learners to determine where they want to, how they want to develop and to realize 
their potential as individuals and as part of a community, which is my next point. Uh, community service is a very, very important uh, aspect of what we teach in the humanities and social sciences. It's about social responsibility, but it's also about the fact that human beings are not born human. We actually become human. We become human through instruction and practice, by acquiring skills. Being human is an acquired skill, and uh, it is a team activity, not an individual activity. And finally, as a, uh, we, one of the great uh, attainments of the, and achievements of AUA has been the creation of a community of scholars. Um, the university uh, is a unique uh, community uh, devoted to the world of ideas, but at AUA we put a lot of emphasis on applied ideas. Um, and uh, we're here to solve problems that face the world. Uh, and what has happened in the course of the past uh, 25 years is that we've uh, achieved a great many of these um, solutions through the proper posing of the question. And that's what you learn in the humanities and social sciences, how to pose, the que how to pose questions in a way that will be persuasive to others. Um, and also to be able to communicate those ideas to others. And one particular sub-community of the many communities that our uh, graduates and our faculty are a part of uh, is the Armenian diaspora community. Uh, the diaspora is already a globalized community uh, without, an, in, without an institution that creates and prepares people to interact with a globalized community. It's hard for Armenia to react to interact with all of them. Uh, and so I, I would say that uh, an underappreciated uh, kind of contribution to innovation, or to, I should say, to our, uh, AUA's role as a catalyst of, inter of, uh, of innovation uh, is serving as a bridge between the diaspora and Armenia because we not only speak their language literally but figuratively. Thank you. That was an excellent viewpoint from the humanities. And I just want to pick up on one or two things you said. In regard to careers, I know in the United States, the average person changes careers five times over their lifetime. So the kinds of uh, programs and, and ambitions you have rightly fits that, that situation. And you mentioned uh, traditional students. In our world, a traditional student is someone who sits in a classroom during the day full time and lives on a campus. Today, in the United States, that's less than 25% of all students. And when you mentioned uh, non-traditional, we don't call non, we call them post-traditional students. And they're the ones who come and engage in learning on our 4,500 campuses over a lifetime. Because you can't stand still. You have to keep learning to keep up with society, innovation, and entrepreneurship. OK, our next speaker is someone who's quite familiar to you all our former president at AUA, Haratun Armenian, who is currently associate dean of academic programs. Oh, at UCLA, do you want to correct me? <laughs> Thank you. Professor in residence at UCLA. I uh, have had enough of uh, academic administration. <laughs> well, um, what I would like to present to you is one project that AUA has been carrying for the last 10 years. There are a couple of uh, things that I would like to highlight. Innovation needs an initiator. The initiator, as we will see in this particular case, may not be the innovator himself. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, the, then what I would also like to highlight is that universities are involved in developing projects in communities. And where are the limits between industry and the university in getting engaged in projects within the community? So these are a couple of things. And the third point that this project also illustrates is what has been mentioned earlier by uh, President Dergurevian and also others that innovation is a multidisciplinary activity. And let's move on. 
uh, four people in a social environment and the initiator, Mr. Terpanjan, comes up during this sort of social meeting and says, Harut, I would like to do something for rural development in Armenia. The idea is picked up and then we come back and we work on it and develop this program. Dr. Ahbabian and also uh, the, uh, the late Vartkes Barsam were very much engaged in that initial uh, uh, scene. The program aims to contribute sustainable economic development of rural areas of Armenia, Artsakh and Javakh. We would like to create sustainable businesses in rural areas. We would like to increase the overall level of entrepreneurship and improve the quality of life of rural residents. And these are sort of some of the general objectives that you set yourself. But what's important and innovative is the way we got to it. As a university, we're not there just as a loan program. So training, education, changing of the minds is very important. And one of the things that people have noticed over and over again is that the people who participated and who developed their own businesses or their own projects through uh, TRDP or Terpanjan Rural Development were, are being identified not just because they have got those businesses, but because they've got a different mindset. And to create that mindset while they are developing their projects, through the uh, uh, one, one, or two, uh, one month or five or six weeks of training, is something that has been noticed. President Bako Sahakian, for example, says, I can identify in Artsakh who has gone through your projects because of that change of mindset and the way they think. Uh, the second component of that is, besides the training, is the financing. But I emphasize that financing and the lo our loans are not the objectives of the program. Our objectives are to achieve results, to achieve outcomes, and to have successful businesses. Even if they may pay their uh, loans fully, what we're concerned with is that they, are, they have sustainable businesses. In order to have sustainable businesses, the third aspect of it, which is continuous monitoring by our uh, team going through these businesses and consulting and providing support to that. So far, over the last nine years or so, we have established 274 businesses. 204 of those are in operation. 488 jobs are created, and 978 persons have gone through the training that we have offered through this program. Now, what is different in, in, in Terpanja rural development? First of all, the model was not adopted or uh, imported from Ukraine or from the United States or from somewhere else. The model of operation of this project was developed locally, having our alumni participate in the initial development of this, alumni who have been working in rural areas. An important component, of course, is the issue of funding, which has been assured uh, for at least five years. Another innovation is how do we manage the program? It's a collegi collegial. Uh, every Tuesday we have got this uh, the meeting where everybody involved in the project is participating. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the faculty who are engaged in this program come from not just one school, they come from all the, uh, the uh, different uh, the components of the university. AUA Extension has had a very important role in developing the training component, but it's also an impact on the community because we have identified local trainers who also teach in local colleges. 
somehow improving their own teaching in the regional small colleges and universities. An important perspective which is different from other projects of rural development, every project is considered on the basis of the business merit, not for charity. If it doesn't make business sense, we're not there. So I think, uh, I don't know, I usually speak for hours about this project, but uh, I'm supposed to stop. I think that was a great description of how innovation and entrepreneurship takes place in all environments, not only in the Silicon Valleys or downtown Yerevan, but is spread throughout the country, and that's important to, to remember. Our final speaker is Hovhaness Avoyan, who is CEO and founder of Pixar. Thank you. So I'm planning to tell my story about how, you know, how AVA helped me in my, you know, journey of, you know, building several startups, uh, some of them quite successful, and especially the last one. So the story starts back in the 90s when it was, you know, if you remember those days, it was like oh, very tough days with no light, no electricity, no food, very, very cold winter, if you remember, 91, 92. I just bought my son, was one year old, and, and you know, I was already an advanced engineer and was doing, you know, working for a, in a couple of places, you know, but it was a very tough time. And one of the, you know, and AV just started and was really, you know, interesting place. And you guess which was the most important things for, which was, was, which was one, of, one of my important motivations of joining uh, AV at that time. It was free lunch at the university. <laughs> free lunch. 24 hours electricity, access to computers, a nice uh, setup. But it was not, of course, not the only one, but also I get surrounded by so many nice and, and well-known people, uh, which helped me just to, you know, understand the perspective, understand it's not only like, you know, there's not just, uh, you know, Armenia, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's the rest of the world. There's a bigger world which we can really, you know, give, have access. Even you know, working from Armenia, we can, you know, work for the for the world and produce something here and sell worldwide. <clears throat> I started my company back in '96, my first company, and since that I've started, you know, five companies. I bring four of them to acquisition, and now I'm working on my fifth fifth company called Pixart which you may you more already heard about that, and it's like, you know, one of the interesting companies, uh, one of the first companies from Armenia, which get, you know, funded by, you know, well, top-notch uh, VC companies in Silicon Valley, by like Sequoia and others. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, IEA was very instrumental all, to all, all, doing all these years. Uh, first of all, I should say, you know, my, my co-founders were my students at the university, so I, I you know, keep, you know, connections with my university and since I graduated. I was lecturing at the, un at the university. I get my uh, key employees from the university. I get, you know, as I said, my co-founders. I get good friends from the universities. So I get connections. I get a network. So I think AEA, besides helping me physically survive these years, uh, help also just to change my mind and mindset, as you said. Uh, so change my mindset and, you know, you know, be not just an engineer, but also became an entrepreneur and uh, built, you know, class, world class, you know, startups and making, you know, these things possible to do in Armenia. I mean, which, you know, people are really thinking small, thinking province, pro, 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 like a, it's a, like a small country, you know, low, you know, we have no access to, you know, larger markets, etc. We have no ambitions. I think we should have ambitions. We should, we should have ambitions. We should always dream big. And all that uh, this university is, 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 I think the biggest mission of this university is, is help people to think uh, and dream big. Thank you. That was a, a great closing comment. Think big. 
And now we're going to ask you all to do some thinking as we open the conversation to questions you have. I think uh, there was a lot of provocative statements here. And the role of AUA is critical to innovation and entrepreneurship, as you can see from the five panelists' views. So let's have some questions. Who's going to begin? Do we have a microphone in the audience? Yeah. Okay. Raise your hand. There must be something that this stimulated in your thinking, like why Armenia? What can we do in Armenia? We're in an isolated area, but we do have talent. We have brains. We have people who can create PixArt, which is now world-renowned. So what does this mean to you all? Can you relate it to your own disciplines, to your own area of work? Let's have a question. Good, over there. Okay, we have a mic over there. Okay, um, as an ODAR, I'd We're like to, um, and social scientist, I'd like to um, address my question to Professor Samuelian. Would you give us an example of the value of immersion in the local culture that helps in the translation of global culture? Hmm, very good. One can start with the way people negotiate. Negotiation skills are different from culture to culture, and until you understand why people are taking the positions they are and using the tactics they are, it's very hard to reach a deal. Short and to the point. Another question. Here, the gentleman on my right. My name is Karen Sarkov again. Um, delighted to have the opportunity to ask the panel a question. Uh, not delighted to see very few people from the College of Business and Economics. Not delighted. We're kind of the biggest part of AUA right now. Uh, how do you see CBE's role, College of Business of Econ and Economics' role, in uh, the development of this great initiative? How exactly do you see us contribute? What can we do? Maybe... Um, Autumn. Do you want to relate that to EPIC or in general? Sure, EPIC. Epic Let's sure. talk about EPIC's role. Sure. So I'll take a stab at that, uh, Garen. Uh, yeah, I think it's a critical role. I mean, I think that uh, from many different vantage points we already heard from the panel, we'll hear a lot more today about how entrepreneurship, how innovation often involves people from different uh, fields. I think uh, you know the, 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 the specializations in business, whether it's finance or management or marketing or economics in, in the CBE, College of Business and Economics, I think any one of them and all of them are critical elements uh, to the sort of value creation process, to the uh, you know, productization, monetization uh, of new ideas. Uh, I foresee lots and lots of collaboration, interaction, and a synergy taking place in EPIC, and I guess it's up to any of the students, any of the instructors, the adjuncts, the full-time, our alumni, to just you know, roll up their sleeves, get involved. So I, I think it's, a, a, it's gonna be a, a great uh, incarnation or implementation of, of teamwork and synergy. The mechanisms, yeah, I think, you know, I may, it might be best if I, I mean, I can imagine some of my own thoughts on that. I think going to see the space, which I think is the very next uh, item on our agenda, and when we see the shared space, when we see the office space, when we see some of the, uh, maybe some of the equipment is here, maybe more is coming, uh, and some of the examples of interaction, I think the modes, uh, I know Armin is going to be talking about that, uh, in when he gets a chance, uh, another chance, with a microphone. I, I envision uh, a lot of the start up discussions, the coursework, the projects that we currently have will, as a next stage, be invited to or would apply to be at EPIC for that incubation. And so I'll say this much now, I think we'll have more opportunity to talk about the different modalities. I understood the question, but I, maybe I'll pass it off, pass it forward uh, to the next panel and next, mm -hmm. and next discussions. I think your question related to the, how does business relate to innovation and entrepreneurship and the best example. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, I think a lot is to be determined, and it will be determined by, I think, many of the people in this room. So 
you know, you, you, including you, including me, including any one of us who, who wishes to get involved. So it's and a great question, and it's yes. uh, to be determined, to be identified. Sorry for being provoked. No, we we need that. We want that. Yes, um, Zavian. Thank you. Uh, I'm Zavian Akian. I'm a trustee on the board of directors. Uh, this question is mostly, the answer for this question is mostly to all individuals who have uh, the aspiration for uh, innovations and entrepreneurships. Um, Hovan has mentioned uh, the, the fact that he has used venture capitalists or venture capital in his businesses. And i like to know, I don't know much about the availability of those kind of uh, opportunities in Armenia and I don't know if these, this question is going to be answered later on uh, in other panels it will be okay S third session but can you give us some idea of, in the meantime of honest about uh, uh, how you were able to tap on these VCs thank you good question in, in Armenia, as, as far as I know, you know, there's already one fund available, Granatus, which is, you know, I think they are doing very early stage funding, and it's pretty small, and it's more like, I would say, an experimental stage. I, see, I, I can see more and more will, will be coming as soon we create more successes. I mean, the, the, pro, the problem is, like, if you do to go to venture capital, Armenia is not a known place, and it's very hard to, you know, to, to convince that, you know, we can create something extraordinary in, in Armenia, uh, unless you have very, you know, significant numbers. I think we, we, which helps us to raise uh, capital is because we, are, we were already successful, and we were already, you know, having big numbers, and it helps us to raise capital. If you are going to uh, venture capital without, you know, history, uh, and without right metrics, it's very hard for Armenian company to raise money. That's why I think we either should have a, you know, kind of a local. Uh, angel investors and in, mm -hmm. you know, venture funds, uh, and we should create more success stories like Pixar. Just saying, okay, there's a there's a country which is like, I mean, companies from Israel have no problem to raise money because everyone knows like Israel is a place of startups, and it's a very easy. Uh, so they already put the country on a map of uh, innovation and you know startup country. I think the mission of the you know for this meeting and also other meetings is like just to put Armenia on a map as an innovation hub, as a place for startups, and then that makes it much easier for other companies to go and raise money. Excellent point. Let's have another question. Yes, over here. Um, thank you. Uh, actually, I don't have a question, but I have a comment that is very relevant to this panel. Good. Uh, we mentioned uh, the topic is uh, AVAs, a nexus of entrepreneurship and innovation. And we uh, used to talk only about the business. What I wanted to say that AVA uh, had a very, very prominent role in uh, building, not supporting only, but building the civil society. And this is as an example of that. Uh, I can bring my example because I, I'm, I was coming from Soviet. Soviet era, and uh, I remember when, uh, and I don't agree with some opinion here that Armenians like to uh, used to think uh, very small locally. No, there are Armenians with national passports who used to think on the contrary, very globally, very, uh, I would say, cosmodromically and very big mm -hmm. and the issue is here how to bring into the balance this so i remember when my professors at public health said you know Anait, you have so many ideas so you have to go and start uh, ngo so <laughs> i i can tell you that since 95 when I uh, opened the first uh, public health NGO in Armenia, People for Healthy Lifestyle, then I uh, started also international organization branch office here, and then another national organization development principles NGO, and all those organizations have been very successful and uh, doing their mission, and I think this is very important 
uh, like part, and Dr. Samuel Yarn we know very well how we are working, so this is very important, yes. that not only, in, uh, this is also innovation, because after Soviet era, we didn't know any, what does it mean, NGO, you know, to be independent, to have some mission, to follow your dreams, to set up goals, to do fundraising on your own. So I think you should not forget about your contribution into this very important part of the society. Good comment. Does anyone on the panel want to react? All right. No, just to say that Anahid has been doing such a great job and we're so proud of her. She's one of our first graduates. Good. Yes, sir, back yes. there. I, ha I have the microphone. Yes, hello. Sorry. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, my name is Aram Salatian from National Instruments. I am an engineer, and hence my question is to Mr. Samuelian. <laughs> <laughs> I think your presentation, very short, to the point, bringing humanity to engineering. Yes. Bringing philosophy to engineering. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, life is changing so fast that if you do not have that campus, it will be very difficult for engineers to figure out what to do. So real question to you is, how do you do that? At AUA, I guess you have classes. Is this mandatory class for engineers to take? How do you bring engineering, uh, humanity to engineering? How do you do that? Thank you. Well, all of our undergraduates are required to take general education courses. Uh, more than half of those are in the humanities and social sciences. They're not required courses. We advise students based on their interests um, to select courses that will help them develop their vision of how they want to uh, realize their potential in the world. Uh, and that's, that's all, uh, it's, it's where we try to uh, encourage people to engage in self-reflection uh, about who they are and where they want, where they, how they fit into the world, and that—that's the biggest question I think for most people, uh, at uh, to be successful in any field, including engineering. I thought there was a hand over here. Yes, yes, you. Thank you very much for a great conversation. I'm a senior student at AUA, and I want to direct my question to Mr. Aboya. Uh, how you were able to market your product without being close to the smart capital, smart money, uh, to venture capitalists, and without having, or maybe you had some networking and connections for all over the world. So the st for the starting phase, without having so many users. I think this will require maybe like another half, uh, half an hour session to describe everything. But you know, in short, it was you know this this, uh, this was like Pixar is my fifth startup, and I already have experience of different companies. And every every time I'm doing like I'm stuck on a, on a better level, basically. Uh, you know, every uh, it's it's all it's all based on experience. I I think you need to start small. You still build up. You know, you need to fail. You need to succeed. You see how things works and and adjust. Uh, it's a uh, it's uh, it's doable. I mean, it's a uh, uh, and I know companies which start on a very small budget and can succeed. Uh, and I know there are already companies which are, you know, doing on mobile, you know, games and and and, and other applications which are already getting success, successful applications without with, without big big money. So it's uh, I would say you know just persistency. I mean just to keep persistently doing something. There are lots of nuances. I cannot talk in a short period of time, but you know, the, I would say you know the, the the key important thing is like just keep doing. Thanks. Yes, woman in the back. Thank you so much for your uh, contribution to this conference. It was very insightful, informative. Um, I would like for Edgar to stand up. Edgar. Okay. Edgar is the founder of the Startup Club at the undergraduate, and I'm a mentor and advisor. Excellent. I would like to know how Epic will contribute to the startup. Because after all, our mission, especially my mission, is to contribute to youth empowerment and make sure our brilliant kids yes. stay in Armenia. So um, I have spoken with Armin um, in the past, but perhaps 
Aram can contribute, uh, can make some comments. Thank you very much. Good point. Aram? Sure. Uh, I guess at the risk of repeating myself, I'm going to say virtually the same thing that was said earlier to the uh, one of our instructors in, in the CBE. I think there's a lot of people in this room, some students, some instructors, some alumni, some friends, some just people interested in AUA. For anyone in the AUA community, I think that any of the discussions that uh, Hilda, you've already undertaken with Armen and others at Epic is the way to begin. As we've already heard, you know, innovation, entrepreneurship mean very different things to different people. So I think it's no no panelists uh, position, and even in the future panels, I'll predict predict the future. No one's going to constrain or define uh, uh, this entrepreneurship of how you all or how anyone else needs to do it. Uh, people here, I guess, are either sharing their experiences or their own insights. But as far as the mechanisms, as far as the how does A fit with B, I think that's organic. I think it's to be determined. I think, you know, as we say in the business, you know, we're going to try things. They may not all succeed. Uh, some will fail. We'll learn from the failures. We'll try again. It's going to iterate. It's going to evolve. Uh, I, for one, am very optimistic and have a lot of faith in, in, in all these potential Interaction. So I'm going to keep that answer uh, at that level. Good. Lorraine? AUA is relatively a, uh, a young university. One moment. Lorraine, wait for the mic right here. AUA is relatively a young university. It's 25 years old. And we are just kind of starting um, this development of innovation and entrepreneurship. There are universities in the United States, like Stanford and Caltech, who obviously, MIT, have been doing this for years and are extremely successful. I guess my question is, are we reaching out? Do we have any collaborations? Are we thinking in terms of how do we collaborate with the major centers of innovation in the United States so we can either emulate them or benefit from their experience? Who would like to take that one? Harajan? Okay. A um, couple of principles when you're getting engaged in an affiliation or arrangement with another institution, with another university. Uh, the practice, the usual practice is that the president goes to visit to the, the, another university. They sign an agreement and nothing happens. So in order for something to happen in that sort of interaction, you need three things. Number one, each of the universities have to identify a key person who's, be, who, who's going to push the, uh, the, that project or that affiliation forward in, in both institutions. Number two, a very clearly defined program that identifies what is going to be done uh, as part of that collaboration. And number three, which is very, very important, who's going to, pill, uh, to pay the bill. Okay. If an affiliation or an agreement does not provide the answers for these three things, then it's not going to work. So before we go and sign contracts or whatever, we have to have a project idea or what we, we're expecting to get out of that. We need to have people who are enthused to go out there and then follow it up, not only just the president. And number three, we have to find the money to be able to do that. Good. Thank you. I think all these qu questions, should we take just one more or move on? How's our time? Yeah. Oh. We'd like to just add one more you thing know, about... You know, the most wonderful thing about this panel is that we have many questions, and that's the sign of, of provocative thinking. Do you just want one more comment? Real, a real quick one on this. Um, this is where the community saw is we just got a top-down mm -hmm. explanation of how that interaction can work. Mm -hmm. I think the bottom-up is really more interesting in some ways, and this is where our community of scholars uh, really comes in. We've got a wide range of connections at the faculty level at almost all these institutions that you mentioned. People that are graduates, people that have, uh, that have taught in those universities, uh, and so forth. And they, they end up giving a lot more um, connectivity and will probably be the uh, place where that ferments and rises up and turns into something that's, uh, that actually uh, bears um, some fruit for the institution. Okay. I think these are wonderful questions. I have a woman who's had her hand up for several 
minutes now. So let's make that the final question. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Your question and also the, the comments. My name is Anna Itzimunyan. I'm representing United Nations Industrial Development Organization. And uh, very warmly, I would like to greet the uh, establishment of this center on behalf of UNIDO. Uh, second is uh, just to continue the question about the partnership. I think that we are in the sector for over years and we know how much we made the progress uh, starting from UIT, Digitech, EIF, all this is now the AUA which does this um, initiative and the UNIDA which we did the last two years this accelerating clean tech program and we started with uh, two or three universities in uh, Yerevan State University, Gyumri and the Polytechnic and revealed the absolutely huge potential among the students for the clean techs and for the startups. My question is the following, continuing like you said about the partnership for, with the AUA, uh, with the American, uh, the accelerator programs, the same question, whether we can think about this creating kind of partnership together, and that's some framework. And uh, some years ago, years ago, I was discussing with Minister of Economy about the to how to support the national innovative program. That is very important that the country could have this strategy and the program around and that all these players will be around, I mean, to bring up just new ideas and to really support the industry. So we, we took in GEM program, excellent, that I'm very glad to hear again that uh, still this program made a huge change in the, in the technology, also some of the changes in the rural areas with the industry. So I just would challenge, if you allow me to ambitiously to say, to think about kind of this partnership framework, what we can have. Great. UN, thank NGOs, uh, R&Ds, and uh, private sector. Thank you. Thank you. That was a good comment. And I think many of these comments are an excellent segue to our next speaker, which who is Aram Karyam, who is the manager for EPIC. And what I hear, Aram, uh, two strains of thought here. One is on partnerships, and the other one is on the concept of venture capital or seed money. So I hope you can discuss those topics as you explain to us your role and the role of EPIC. Welcome. So I'm not Aram Karyan. Uh, I'm Armin Mukherjian, uh, director of EPIC. And I'm just going to make a quick presentation before all of us leave and go uh, participate in the opening ceremony of EPIC. So hopefully that will help answer some of the questions. So in terms of, I guess, coming from maybe uh, a bit from far away, uh, the role of education in terms of also educational institutions over time has evolved a lot, right? If, if we look from about 2,000 years ago to about 19th century, uh, educational institutions were places where people would just go and listen to someone lecture to them. And then in the 19th century, it changed a bit. It was more of a, came from the Humboldtian concept where basic research became part of education as well. And which was the second generation of uh, institutions. And the third generation, which is where we are now, is institutions, especially educational institutions, are much broader and a lot more is expected out of them. Uh, institutions have cultural impact, they have societal impact, as we just heard. Also, a lot of the institutions are expected to have an entrepreneurial arm. Institutions are expected to also spin out companies, to have startups that come out of the institutions. And that's the place. Uh, at AUA where EPIC is, right? EPIC is trying to promote the startup culture, is trying to incubate companies. That's the goal. Uh, now in terms of its mission is to foster the understanding of entrepreneurship and application of it to help create high impact multidisciplinary ventures. And it's uh, a lot of, I think, very uh, accumulated words all put together. What this means is that we want to help students, and not just students from AUA, but students from also abroad uh, in other institutions to help them build their own startups, to come and learn more about entrepreneurship, become more entrepreneurial. Uh, some of the focus areas, and uh, I was debating whether to put focus areas here, because there are always areas that people will say, there should be in here, but there aren't here. Uh, these are areas where we think are more forward looking, and where AUA can also, uh, has the capacity and also Armenia has the needs for all of these kind of focus areas where we are going to try to promote. 
So those are IT, obviously, is very big in Armenia. We are trying to emphasize data analytics, AR, virtual and augmented reality, robotics, drones, mini satellites, uh, renewable energy, which AUA has already been carrying out a lot of research. Artak has been leading it. Agriculture and agrotech is also one of the other areas. Uh, now, in terms of the ecosystem, it's a, it's a very broad ecosystem, right? So what I'm trying to show here is that uh, at EPIC, all of these uh, different parts will play their own role, right? So there's education, uh, there is research combined with faculty, there's partners and partners we can think very broadly. Uh, addressing uh, Lorraine's point, where it, whether EPIC is collaborating with any other institutions, yes, EPIC is collaborating with institutions, but collaboration usually happens between people. So we are collaborating with the MIT, uh, with Harvard, with Stanford, it's in process, so that's all happening. Uh, we also have space, which we'll be uh, seeing in a few minutes. Equipment that is uh, top-notch, some of the equipment uh, that I haven't even seen uh, at the top universities in the US. Uh, residents, and I'll speak more about this, and also mentors, and mentors, both technical mentors, uh, mentors uh, that will help with business, and these mentors won't be just uh, from AUA or from Armenia, a lot of them are actually from also outside of Armenia. Uh, now the goal is actually to help build entrepreneurship education at AUA, also help incubate ideas and startups. Uh, in terms of education, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time here since we are almost late from our opening ceremony, but uh, what we want to teach students is fundamentals in entrepreneurship. And it's not just one entrepreneurship class where you learn actually how to build one product. It's actually a combination of a lot of the business classes, it's a combination of many engineering classes. And what we want to focus on is a lot of the multidisciplinary classes, where rather than someone taking, for example, product development class uh, from business and doing the business aspect and someone taking from engineering and doing the engineering aspect, this all will be combined in one class. So people actually, students will experience all in one class. So they'll come out of the class, for example, with a ready product, they'll know how to market it, they'll know who to go talk to. Uh, there will be some classes with industry focus, such as energy ventures, for example, or IT ventures. We have already started a seminar series, What's Next, which was started last fall, where they have four speakers. And it also have help with the capstone projects. So some of the capstone projects will be administered uh, by EPIC. Uh, in terms of incubation, again, this is a very short representation of what we are trying to do. But uh, what a lot of people call incubation at the universities, we call reactive incubation. And that's basically organizing maybe competitions, trying to see what ideas people have, or students submitting ideas. And you choose the ideas that are right, and you are like, OK, if this idea is good, I'm going to help you develop that idea. And that's, that, 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 we are going to do that at AUA too. Uh, we'll provide equipment, we'll provide space, we'll provide mentors, uh, we'll provide technical expertise if needed. Even if AUA doesn't have it, we'll try to find the people who actually have the expertise. Uh, but also, we'll do what we call proactive incubation. And this is where we'll also try to identify what is it that AUA has capacity to do? And what is it that are the needs for this nation, for this country? And we'll try to identify people to come together to address those needs as well. So this is much harder since uh, you'll, first of all, almost, it's almost like you're creating a startup from the very beginning at AUA uh, without someone coming and telling you what ideas they have. But that's also one of our goals. In terms of hardware, and I'll quickly cover this, uh, we have, we're going, going to have a lot of, uh, about six, seven types of 3D printers for various materials, uh, CNC milling machines, uh, 3D laser scanners, and I haven't seen any in Armenia, and I haven't seen any actually in, in some of the best universities uh, uh, in the US, uh, vacuum casting machines and so on. Uh, we'll have electronics lab as well, where you can do uh, uh, open hardware uh, innovation if you want to. Um, Basically, uh, if it's more of a rather than open software, you can, you can buy your Arduinos and actually we'll provide the Arduinos and you can come and create whatever you want to create at AUA. And this is going to be in the basement. We are not going to tour this uh, today, but uh, at the end of summer that will be ready too. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I wanted to acknowledge a few individuals. Uh, first of all, AUA colleges and School of Public Health and specifically uh, Armand Erkurian, I mentioned I wanted to acknowledge uh, Aram Hajan and also Alan Amirkhanian for helping submit a proposal uh, to get EPIC started. AUA administration, everyone for uh, handling the grant proposals and specifically wanted to thank also Lorraine uh, who helped 
promote EPIC uh, relentlessly uh, across the globe. Uh, I also want to thank Armenian innovation and startup uh, ecosystem in general, all the players who actually welcomed EPIC as one of the, one of the pieces of that ecosystem. Uh, USAID in Asha and uh, last but not least, uh, Sara Chichian who, uh, despite her age, uh, understands the value of innovation and is so committed to helping AUA develop EPIC, start EPIC and continue promoting innovative education and entrepreneurship across Armenia. So please help me in thanking her. And uh, what we'll do now is I think all of us will head out of the building, of, the, of this new building. We'll go outside near the entrance of the... No, but yeah, we'll go outside. All of us will go outside. And then we'll enter the main building of AUA where uh, there will be the opening ceremony. And at 12.30, all of us can go to the AUA cafeteria for lunch. Lunch will be provided. And 1.30 a.m., 1.30 p.m. sharp, please be here for the continuation of the conference. Thank you. Thank you. 